Alrighty, it's been a while, so let's start off with a story. Once upon a time, there was this kid. His name was Bobby Tables. Soon after changing his name to Bobby Script, he started to see some special messages on any new website he signs up to. Now I wonder, what's the connection? Jokes aside, let's talk about XSS. XSS stands for cross-site scripting. As far as I'm aware, Microsoft coined the word. Now, I know I'm not supposed to give my opinion, but I just don't think it's a great name for the vulnerability. Don't get me wrong though, XSS sounds cool and everything, but I just don't think it's the right name. But anyways, before we jump right into XSS, let's talk about a core security feature called same origin policy. So that, you know, we're all on the same page. Same origin policy, or simply SOP, is a policy that stops one website from reading or writing data to another. The policy essentially checks for three different things in the origin. The protocol, host, and the port. Only if all the three are the same for two different origins, then the browser allows cross-origin read or write. For example, if we have a website, pwnfunction.com, and another website, hackfunction.com, then the browser checks if the protocol is same in both cases, which it is, which is HTTP. So on to the next check. Next, it checks for the host. Obviously, they're different. One is pwn function, the other one's hack function. So the browser blocks cross-origin read and write. As you can imagine, this is a great feature, ensuring some basic web security. But now let us imagine something like a thought experiment. What if we have control over the JavaScript of another website? You can pause the video and think about it yourself, but let's, let's just run down some ideas, shall we? So firstly, we know that JavaScript has access to HTML documents via the DOM APIs, which are provided by the browser, which means we can manipulate the DOM and make it look different, like defacing a page or something. Better yet, we can steal some CSRF tokens, which could also be problematic. Or you can simply read some cookies, if you can, and send it over to your website via AJAX request, or maybe a form submission, whatever that might be. But I think you see the picture that I'm trying to paint. Having access to JavaScript on another website in a different user's context can be very problematic. But now the question is, can we really inject some JavaScript into another website? The answer is, yes we can. And that's exactly what XSS or cross-site scripting is all about. Merely just a JavaScript injection technique. Let's start by looking at a very basic and a classic example. Assume that we have a website where you can input your name into this text box and get back the response which simply greets us back by our name. Let's see what actually happens behind the scenes. So when we click on the button, we send out an HTTP request which looks something like this. As you can see, the name is sent out as a get parameter and after the server processes the information, it returns us back with a response. Here we see the name that we sent out. Now, the interesting thing here is that the browser sees the whole of the response data as HTML, which is also specified by the content type header up here. The thing is, the browser doesn't know or can't know without any extra information that the input what we sent out is being reflected back in the response. So simply, it just assumes the entire blob to be HTML and it does its further processing and renders it out to the screen. Now let's repeat the same request, but this time let's change the input from just being a name to something that looks like HTML. In this case, script alert. Script is a tag which is used to execute some JavaScript and inside that we have alert, which simply just pops up a small little pop-up pretty much, I guess. But anyways, now a similar thing happens we get back the input directly in the response. 
but as you can see, there is no differentiation, if, if I said the word correctly, there is no differenti different differenti Jesus Christ, there's no difference between the HTML code that needs to be rendered and the input we sent out, so the browser doesn't necessarily know. So it simply accepts the whole thing as the HTML and executes it, which in turn executes our JavaScript code, ergo JavaScript injection, or simply call it XSS. Now there's a couple of different types of XSS. The first one is reflected XSS. That's the one you just saw now, where the input was reflected back in the response and identified as a script block and then gets executed. The second one is stored XSS. This is similar to the first one, but the input isn't just reflected back, but instead the input is persisted or basically stored in some sort of a database or something and then shown back to the user by pulling it out from the place that it was stored. But as you can imagine, this can be even more powerful since the malicious input is actually stored in a database and injects everyone who just views the page that depended on your input. A classic example often used to explain stored XSS is the comment section. Maybe think of it as the YouTube comment section. If there was XSS, then you'd be able to inject some malicious JavaScript, which gets stored in the database. Now, whoever sees the comment gets infected automatically. Let's take a quick detour and check out a real world example. I'm not sure if the following video is an example of a stored XSS, but it's kind of similar to what I just described. But here's a funny XSS bug in a custom Twitch chat window. Um. <laughs> so let me put it this way, this way. Uh, you guys found a vulnerability in the chat client that <laughs> Don't mind me. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm just gonna sit back and sip my tea. By the way, you can find the link to the full video in the description. Check it out. Now, getting back to the types of XSS, the third one is DOM XSS, where the user's input directly lands inside a dangerous part of the JavaScript code. This happens entirely on the client side. For example, here, the user input directly lands inside the inner HTML property of the div element. So in this case, a string supplied by the user lands inside a DOM, which ultimately has the ability to execute some JavaScript. Lastly, we have MXSS or mutation XSS, where the user input is mutated or changed in some way by the browser before inserting it to the DOM, which sometimes can lead to cross-site scripting. Solving the problem of XSS isn't a simple one. Oftentimes requires a lot of work to get rid of some of these issues. Take this for example, a script alert one. You may think that blocking script tags might fix the issue, but it's far from the truth. Script tags isn't the only way to execute some JavaScript. You can use something called as event handlers, which is associated with most of the tags in HTML, which executes again, some JavaScript. Now you might think, let's just filter out opening and closing tag symbols so that there's no tags at all. Well, this might be useful, but it's also problematic in some cases. For example, email services like Gmail use HTML to send emails out. Similarly, you have online website builders, rich text editors, or even markdown editors. And I'm sure that there are many other use cases. As you can guess by now, it's not that simple, but amazing people have come up with some great solutions which work great in a lot of cases. For example, DOM Purify is an awesome library which sanitizes JavaScript and spits out only the clean HTML. So go ahead, check it out. Since XSS is a super huge slash endless topic of exploration, I've decided that the best way that the community and myself can learn about XSS is by making a bunch of challenges and put them on together on a website, 
with solutions for each one of them, with explanations of course, so that people can understand things better. So for that reason, I've went ahead and created a website for you guys. The website has been up and running for about a month or two. New challenges will be posted as often as possible and the old ones are going to stay there like always, like forever and ever till the end of time. Okay, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but hey, as long as I'm around, okay. Anyways, the website is at xss.pwnfunction.com to which the links are going to be in the description, of course. So check it out. Hopefully, this will be some sort of a help to you guys. And uh, lastly, like I always end my videos with a cheesy line, here it goes. In the end, XSS boils down to just being JavaScript injection. And as you saw, it can be in many different places, taking many different forms, like a shapeshifter. But what you do with it, or what it's good for, is up to you.